So what I'd like to do today is to talk a little bit about a, a, a relatively new file system. This is called Stratus File System, and it is an easy and local file storage for Linux. So we're going to cover that right after this. So what is Stratus? Stratus is a modern file system, and it is written in Rust. It has modern things like copy on write and snapshots and all this wonderful stuff that we'll talk about more in detail. But there's two parts to it. There's a Stratus server, and there's a Stratus client. Stratus server is the part that's written in Rust, and the client is written in Python. It is designed to meet the needs of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, server, uh, and, and workstation. So it brings advanced features to uh, these distributions without having to layer on multiple solutions in order to achieve it. So why is that all a problem? So over the years, Linux has added many storage-related features. So we have RAID, we have thin provisioning, we have multipath, we have whole file system encryption, uh, and, and so on and so forth all of which depend on proper user configuration to use them. Further, these features are layered on using stacking. I mean, we are able to stack these solutions, and the stacking comes from uh, being able to apply these things using multiple packages. Why is that bad? That's bad because it increases the likelihood of bugs. It also increases our security footprint and makes our systems more vulnerable. Also, the other problem that we have is it makes it difficult to automate because now we have multiple tools we have to provide automation scripts for. Also, we can run into uh, a huge number of possible configurations that are being deployed into a single production environment. Uh, at home, you probably wouldn't have this problem, but uh, in the real world, if you have thousands of servers with many different users running around configuring it, it's possible that you could have one server with one configuration and another server with a different configuration, all using a similar file system. And that is not ideal when you're trying to automate the support of these kinds of uh, setups. So that, and that means that the user has to manage multiple solutions in multiple stacks with different APIs and different command options. And that means that every one those users are really being, those sysadmins or the file system administrators, they're just being burdened with unnecessary overhead. In, uh, in the VMF, uh, we've talked about that before, the virtual file system for Linux, the file systems that we have available today that have really gained popularity and gained users are ZFS and ButterFS. Both of those incorporate what Linux would need, it would, but still they require multiple tools to accomplish. So one of the advantages or disadvantages, if you will, is that VMF storage, they take the raw storage and they place it into pools. Why is that bad? Pools hide everything from the user, meaning that the only way I can get information about what's going on with that file system is to inquire the overlaying uh, system. So in, in ZFS, it would be the admin utilities that ZFS provides. ButterFS, the same thing. One of the other problems is that ZFS has licensing issues, which can hamper the adoption by enterprise customers using Linux distributions attempting to install ZFS on it. So I mean, we don't know what Oracle might do. I mean, the, the license is written in such a way that it does, it, it is an impediment for free and open source use. So that is an issue with some customer. ButterFS doesn't have those licensing issues, but it relies on updates from the kernel. So in enterprise level builds, I've talked about this before, where you are attempting to certify to a particular standard, it's difficult to change out a kernel when you have an existing accreditation for the runtime of your production environments. The other thing is, is that we want to be able to provide modern features such as thin provisioning. We want snapshots. We want multipathing. We want encryption. We want hardware reconfiguration, meaning I can add devices, storage devices to an existing pool. Yes, you can also, we also may have need to, to uh, remove them. 
uh, on occasion, and we might need to expand or shrink different file systems depending upon our needs. The critical things, though, are being able to monitor and having caching tiers in order to speed up the retrieval of information that are in those, uh, those file systems. But from a user standpoint and an administrative standpoint, we want to simplify the commands that are needed in order to manage all of those things, then provisioning snapshots and all that, into a single tool. We don't want to go to Lux and LVMS and all these different things in order to try to manage what's going on. That makes it difficult. Also, we want a programmatic language neutral API, meaning if I want to use Rust, if I want to use C or C++ or Python or whatever, that I have an API that doesn't set mandate that, oh, you have to use C. Uh, also, I need event-driven monitoring that'll, that'll, that'll let me know what's going on on the system and send me alerts when something is about to go, uh, to go south. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if, if, I, if I have something going sideways in production, I want to know about it preferably be warned about it that it's a possibility that something's going on in the file system that hasn't reached a critical breakage point yet but there are signs that are warnings that hey you either you got a drive that's about to fail or you've got a communication channel that's jammed up or something that's going on you know I want to know right you want to know what's going on so I, I need to eliminate the, the other thing I need to do is that almost in every one of the file systems that I have worked with there are steps that you have to do to do manual resizing of the file system. So if I expand it, I still have this other step I have to do in order to physically tell the file system to move the markers so that it, it knows that instead, you know, instead, instead of having whatever the, the file system size was when I started the resizing operation, I now have more space to deal with. And, and, yeah, we want that to be automatic. We don't want that to be, uh, hey, somebody forgot to do it and we didn't get the file size expanded and so the, the file system crashed because we ran out of disk. We wanted a NIT D capable uh, system, a file system. Well, what does that mean? I need to have it work on the root file system. Now, boot is going to be an exception because boot has special needs. So I, I don't think that um, yeah, Stratus would be an ideal boot, uh, a boot file system. Uh, also, I want to be able to adapt to new storage technologies as they become available. And one of the ways that you can do that is you can use the block appearing PMEM. So to do that, because that'll tell you that, hey, I've got something going on in the file system. I've added a new technology to it. And now Stratus would be able to adapt itself to that new. Stratus started out as a project in 2018. So it's relatively new. It's only about four years old. And for a file system, that's pretty young. Uh, it released its first stable uh, candidate back in July of 2020. That's when I initially looked at Stratus. So it's been two years since I've looked at it. The version back then was version 2.2.6, I think was the current one. The one I review was 2.2.0, which was the one available in Fedora at the time. So the current release is 3.3. That was released today, October the 18th. I doubt that it's going to be in Fedora 37, but uh, the current release is 3.23, and I think think that prior to this would have been July 7th, 2022. So Stratus is a, a new local file, uh, a new storage manager, and it provides managed file systems on top of pools of storage with additional features to the user. So um, it is currently supported on Fedora and Arch Linux. I, I don't know what their rollout plans for support on other distributions are. And of course, It'll it parts well. Stratus is available on Red Hat as a technology preview, but it is not currently recommended to put it into production use. Uh, yeah, it just takes file systems take a while to cook. There is if you want to have a, a GUI client, you have support from Cockpit by Levitt, Boom, and Moonin. So. Uh, those are available to you as well. Stratus enables you to more easily perform storage tasks such as I want to manage snapshots. I want to manage thin provisioning. I want to automatically grow a file system as my, my needs and my storage requirements uh, grow. 
And, uh, and I want to be able to maintain that file system from a single tool. I don't want to have to go to multiple places to do it. To administer Stratus storage, there is a Stratus utility, which communicates with the Stratus D server in the background. So there's a site for Stratus. It has a lot of document documentation. It also has some tutorials. And in those tutorials, it's kind of interesting. One of the examples they have there is they perform the steps to build out a particular uh, file system using Stratus. And then they show the same commands with a conventional file system using the layered approach. And it's amazing how, many, how much less there is to do with Stratus over the old traditional method of doing it. So, but, you know, let's get back to engineering. I mean, opinions are great, right? Everybody has one, uh, but they don't account for much in engineering. And I think I've told you this before. I had a boss that if you brought an opinion to him, he would say, well, that's nice. I'm glad you have an opinion, but show me the numbers. So, yeah, I mean, you had to prove what you were saying. Uh, it, it wasn't enough to just say, well, this... This file system is performing slow. He had to say, why? <laughs> That's what, you better have that answer. Why? And what did you do to fix it? Because you didn't bring a problem to him. You brought a problem with a solution. That's just the way it was. You didn't have to have it executed yet, but you better have a plan, and you better know what the improvement would be when you came to him. Let's do some engineering, and let's find out just what Stratus will do. So in order to do this, I'm going to see how it stacks up against ButterFS, EXT4, and XFS on a modern workstation. So I am going to be using Fedora 37 today. It's a beta version, of course, because Fedora 37 has not been officially released yet. It's probably getting close. Um, the storage pools will be using a Samsung M.2 NVMe. Uh, it's a one terabyte, and we'll we'll be pushing four gig of RAM or so into this into the VM for this. Uh, and then I'm going to be using uh, Pharonix's, uh benchmarking suite, and I will be using FIO to do this test. Okay, so let's go take a look at the benchmark. So in conclusion, looking at the benchmark results, it is somewhat mixed, but Stratus did pretty well overall. Uh, I mean, overall, it was in third place behind EXT4 and XFS. So what do we conclude from this? I guess if you, I, I guess if you look at it as a, as a, in a standpoint of looking back at 2020, results and 2022's results, I would say Stratus and performance has improved a quite a bit. So yeah, and it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It does very well in some tests. It came out first in, in quite a few of them. And then, yeah, and then it, uh, it, it didn't do so well in others. So uh, I still would like to run IOZone because IOZone gives me the chance to look at different uh, work, uh, different working sets. So whether it's a compiler, a database, or 
you know, sequential file reads and sequential file writes, but it actually will show me how the how Stratus will perform in those instances. So I'm going to set that test up. I'll probably just post it as a as a uh, as a benchmark video. Uh, yeah, and uh, and and we'll go from there. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again real soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.